Hello everyone. Have you read the headlines and seen on the news a lot of discussion lately about the dangerous health effects of e-cigarettes or so-called vaping? Well, we certainly have, and that's the topic of our presentation this month. As always, this is Gary Sams, the Chief Wellness Officer for EBIX Benefits Administration and Wellness, and I'm here this month to really just introduce this topic because we're fortunate enough on our team that one of our senior health coaches, Michael Wisdom, is a certified tobacco treatment specialist through the Mayo Clinic and has many years of experience working with individuals to end their addiction to nicotine and tobacco products. And so, so I've brought Michael in to discuss this issue of vaping and e-cigarettes. And what we're going to cover today is we're going to look at what an e-cigarette actually is because there's many forms and how they work. And most importantly though, we're going to talk about the health problems that are associated with the use of these products and then discuss some resources to help address this issue if you know someone who's using them. As I mentioned, there certainly are a lot of headlines lately about the problems with the use of this product. As you can see here, 33 dead, nearly 1,500 now affected by vaping lung disease. Shortly after that, another headline from the Vaping Illness Tracker, 2,172 cases and 44 deaths. And as we're recording this, this past week, the American Medical Association has come out calling for an immediate vaping ban. So it certainly is a timely and important issue for us to address. And so, Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you to handle the bulk of this discussion about vaping and presenting what we know and how we can address this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary, for that introduction. My name is Michael Wisdom. I'm a health and wellness coach here at EBICS. I'm also a Mayo Clinic trained tobacco treatment specialist. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the e-cigarettes here more in detail, and, and hopefully we can provide some background and understanding of what's going on and what the landscape of these looks like right now. So I'll start with what is an e-cigarette? There's many variety, a uh, lot to kind of understand here. Simply, electronic cigarettes are battery-powered devices that have a heat that heat a liquid solution often containing nicotine into a vapor to be inhaled instead of calling them smoking they're often referred to as vaping right the device itself you might hear referred to as e-cigs vape pens vapes e-hookahs mods tank systems electronic nicotine delivery systems or ends they run the gamut right so from what you would find at your local vape shop to your convenience store there's a variety of devices and solutions, and there's not a whole lot of consistency. Some e-cigarettes are made to look like regular cigarettes, cigars, pipes, your traditional tobacco variety things. And some of them resemble pens, USB sticks, and other everyday items. These are the things that workplaces and schools are struggling with right now, is how to curb the utilization because they're easily masked in these settings. Thanks. Some e-cigarettes are sold with cartridges containing liquid, while others are designed so the user can add a solution that is bought separately. The solutions often contain vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, flavorings, other additives, as well as nicotine. Bear in mind that most of these products are not well labeled with what it actually contains. Some are downright deceptively labeled to what they contain, whether that be the concentration of nicotine or the additives, the flavorings the preservatives most of those are not across the board similar so just know that going in a lot of people uh, misconstrue it and think that they're just uh, it's just aerosol water vapor which in fact it is not and we don't know what some of the products contain depending on where you purchase it at. So if you bought it at your local vape shop or if you bought it at the convenience store, it's apples and oranges with what it may actually contain. E-cigarettes, the way they're constructed, they have a heating element called an atomizer or vaporizer. And this can be powered by a replaceable battery or charged from a computer or electrical outlet. Uh, when the atomizer or the vaporizer turns on, it heats the solution into an aerosol or a vapor. This vapor is inhaled and exhaled to simulate the experience of smoking. 
Again, what you're inhaling and exhaling runs the gamut based on where you procured it from. E-cigarette vapor in general, the, the user is gonna inhale and exhale many different things. Some contain harmful and potentially harmful substances, including volatile organic compounds, ultrafine particles, nicotine, which again is the addictive component, the thing that gets you hooked to tobacco products, many cancer-causing chemicals, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead, flavoring such as diacetyl, a chemical linked to serious lung disease. You may have heard in news reports previously as commonly referred to being the thing that linked to popcorn lung. In the U.S., youth are going to be more likely than adults to use e-cigarettes. As of 2019, Roughly 5.3 million U.S. middle school and high school students reported using an e-cigarette product in the past 30 days. That's about 10.5% of middle school students, about 27.5% of high school students are using some form of e-cigarette recently. E-cigarettes have, up till now, uh, been marketed quite strongly at youth. There's obviously a push trying to get some of these things changed uh, to make it less youth friendly, but the, the flavoring has been one of the biggest banes with that. They've made flavors that appeal to younger a, a younger audience from cool, cool cucumber and mint to cotton candy, and silly names such as unicorn vomit and gummy bears. The marketing is, has gone skewed towards social networks uh, using influencers and methods that we know uh, target a younger audience quite well. Most e-cigarettes contain nicotine, which has known health effects. Nicotine is highly addictive. Nicotine is a health danger for pregnant women and toxic to developing fetuses. Nicotine can harm adolescent brain development, which continues into the early to mid 20s. This effect can, in the short term, can have effects on emotion and impulse control. Uh, research shows that long term, it can cause an increased risk for developing psychiatric disorders and cognitive impairment later in life as well. Uh, the vapor can contain cancer-causing chemicals and tiny particles that reach deep into our lungs. Now research is also pointing out the secondhand effect, knowing that what is exhaled from that, that e-cigarette vapor contains particles that may be toxic to others around user, similar to secondhand smoke. We also know, you may see in the news, the lung injuries that are occurring associated with e-cigarette use. Uh, the CDC is closely monitoring these issues. Now it has a clinical term called E-Valley or E-V-A-L-I, E-Valley, e-cigarette vape uh, associated lung injuries. To date, there are 2,290 confirmed cases in 49 states. Alaska being the only one that doesn't have a confirmed case. Also reported in DC and Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. Currently, there are 47 confirmed deaths in 25 states associated with this. You'll see patients are reporting flu-like or, or lung infection-like symptoms. Things like breathing difficulty, to chest pain, to vomiting, to fever, to fatigue. There still is a difficulty in diagnosis of this. They have to rule out flu and other ancillary things, which is why the CDC is monitoring this closely to determine the association of what is in these products that is causing this, this illness. Your healthcare provider does not recommend e-cigarettes as a viable alternative to tobacco or a viable quit aid for quitting smoking. American Medical Association recently came out with position stance uh, stating that they would like to see all e-cigarette and vape products banned and off the market. There are currently seven FDA approved medications to help quit smoking or quit using e-cigarette products. Patches, gum, lozenges are all available over the counter as nicotine replacement therapy aids. Inhalers and nasal sprays are available for nicotine replacement therapy via prescription through your physician. And then in terms of medications that can help to aid in your quit attempt, Zyban and Chantix are available um, by prescription from your physician as well. And these are all FDA approved mechanisms that your physician would, would gladly help counsel you through covered a lot of information about e-cigarettes. It's important to find the right resources. We've listed a couple here in this slide, including becomeanx.org and smokefree.gov. These are, are wonderful online tools that you can use. You'll find a lot of information to, as you 
work on moving forward, whether it be in, in stopping the e-cigarette use or stopping smoking or chewing or whatever your, your tobacco utilization may be. If you're involved with the EBIX wellness program as well, you can find some of our resources at breathebetter.me or listed in your portal. Thank you for your time and attention today. Uh, hopefully we've been able to provide a little more information and resource to you about the ever-changing landscape of e-cigarettes right now.